Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. Today, I'm excited to be starting a showcase for Descent Legends of the Dark from Fantasy Flight Games. Now, if you want to see all the components that come inside of this box, I've got an unboxing which I recently released. I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner, but this video is going to begin our journey into the campaign together. Now, the one thing to note is you'll be using the Learn to Play guide as well as the app in order to move through this experience and I will have the app on screens so you're able to see everything that goes on inside of that as well as the gameplay going on on the table now for setup purposes and overview of those component pieces that's primarily what I'm focusing on here how to get the game set up and ready to go and an understanding of what components that I'm actually showing you as I set them up so we'll start with the components that actually come outside of the app first and then we'll move into the app and follow the instructions the two booklets you're going to want to have close at hand is the Learn to Play guide. We'll be using this guide along with the app to go through this video, which will help you get things to the table. And on the right there is an optional book, the Lore Guide. This is going to give you a lot of information around what's going on in this current edition of Descent. So something that you may want to consume prior to playing, or you could potentially consume as you play. That is up to you. Descent Legends of the Dark is a cooperative game for one to four players. The players assume the roles of heroes who oppose evil throughout the expansive campaign, improving their abilities, slaying foes, exploring Terranoth, and forging their own legend. Each quest is part of the Blood and Flame campaign, during which the heroes attempt to complete a series of objectives before succumbing to either their injuries or the enemy's plans. Now, as the heroes explore forbidden dungeons, dark forests, and ancient battlegrounds, they attempt to thwart the schemes of evil and gather power and experience. The hero's path is plagued with difficult choices that, by the end of the campaign, may transform the fate of Tiranoth. The first major step of setup is going to be to build all of the 3D terrain that comes inside the box. There are 47 terrain pieces to put together and the bottom of the box houses an area where you can store all of the terrain. It's also important to note that this piece right here along the edges can be taken out and flipped over and is also used as part of the terrain as well. Now the other thing I want to make mention of is the time in order to put this together. The very first time you put a couple of the pieces together it will take you just a bit longer but as you do one two three of them you start to begin to understand how these things all connect together it really speeds up and takes about 30 minutes or so to have all of these things assembled it's also important to note that none of this stuff requires glue whatsoever it's all just push to fit it's very easy to put them together now, just before we head inside the app, let's go ahead and choose the heroes we wish to control. Now, when you're playing solo, the game recommends that you use two heroes, but there is nothing stopping you from using three or all four of the starting heroes. These are the starting four you can select from. There are two others which will come out of the campaign as you progress. Here's a look at those two other characters, but again, you can't choose these to begin. Let's learn a little bit about the heroes before we select them. We have Bryn, the human Avenger, leading the charge against her foes and standing ready to defend against their reprisal. We have Galadin, the elf huntsman, who is adaptable and focused and able to deliver damage wherever it is needed. We have Cyrus, the human prodigy, who uses magic to manipulate his attacks and enemies with help from his phoenix. And finally, we have Varix, the dragon hybrid outcast who heals the party and lashes out at their foes with draconic wrath. Out of the four heroes available, here are the two that I have selected to move forward with. And at this point, we need to gather some components for each of them. First, you're going to need to grab the miniature for each of them. Next, you're going to need a health dial. The Learn to Play guide then tells you exactly which weapons you should have on each of the characters. For these two characters, I've placed them on top of their player boards for now. One thing to note is in the bottom left-hand corner of each of these cards, you'll see the keyword weapon. And beside some of them, you're also going to see an up arrow or two. And that signifies that it's on the upgraded or better side of that particular weapon. So what you're going to do starting out the game is ensure that every single one of these cards is on the weapon keyword side without the arrows. 
Then using the sleeves that came inside the box, you're gonna take both of the cards, making sure that the side of the card that states just weapon with no arrows is facing outwards, and you're gonna place the two cards for each of the heroes back to back inside of each of their sleeves. With both of the starting weapons inside of each of the sleeves, you now should be able to flip this sleeve over and it will have weapon without the arrows on both sides for both of your starting weapons. Every character should then have a reference card in front of them. They are double-sided and there's two here on screen showing you what both sides look like. Next up for both of our characters, Varix and Cyrus, we need to have the health dials match the health that they have on their character board. So you can see the health value is eight. We'll now set the dial to eight for Varix. And then over on Cyrus, we have a seven. So we'll set Cyrus's dial to seven. That's gonna conclude the initial steps of setting up your character. There's a number of icons and other skills and special abilities that we'll touch on as we move through the gameplay. For now, we have everything set up here that we need for these two characters. So let's move to creating the supply and setting up the tokens. Here is the supply all set up. I've gone ahead, broken out all the tokens by type. So starting at the very top of the game trays, we've got some purple tokens way up there. They are the prepared tokens. Now these are the beginning of a number of different hero condition tokens. So prepared and purple is one of them. The green ones right beside it are infected condition tokens. The blue and the white tokens underneath that have the eye look to it, as well as the triangle there in gold with the blue back is an explore and sight token. So explore is the blue blue and sight is the white. Going down to the next game tray, we have some more hero conditions. The blue ones are focus tokens, red are scarred tokens, and the orange or yellow are terrified tokens. Going down further from that, we have some base snap-ons that are going to actually be snapped underneath of the miniatures to help to categorize which ones are on the game board and also to know which ones the app is actually triggering or controlling or pushing instructions towards. And it also helps with individuals that have colorblind issues as there are notches in those bases. So if colors can't be seen well, then the notches can help distinguish those figures. And then finally at the very bottom there, what looks like a teardrop, but is in like a tan color is fatigue tokens. And it wouldn't be Descent without some dice. So you'll see there are four black skill dice. You'll use these when doing skill checks and you'll also be checking the modifiers on your character's board to determine the success or failure of those tests. Also, we have orange dice that are D8s essentially and we have blue dice that are D12s. These are gonna be rolled whether you're attacking or defending. To make life easy, you can take a look at your attack and defense in terms of what dice you get right on your character board, and it will state which type of dice you'll be rolling and how many, so you can then choose the dice from the pool and place them next to your character board so you have them ready to roll when you need them. Ferrix has both dice needed for attack and defense, and Cyrus on the other side has two orange dice, one for attack and one for defense. Next, you're gonna to want to have some decks set up. I've broken them out to explain how you're going to set them up. First thing you'll do is go through the packs of cards inside the box, and you're gonna pull out the cards that are consumables. This keyword will be in the white banner on the card, as you can see here on screen. You'll notice on the left-hand side, the largest stack, consumable keyword is just the word consumable. But on the right-hand side, you'll notice one card that has been flipped over to its upgraded side, and it shows a couple arrows beside the keyword consumable, meaning this is the upgraded version of that card. When you create this consumable stack of cards, make sure that the consumable keyword is facing up and that none of the cards have their upgraded side facing up. It'll just make life easy for you as you go through the game. It's also worth mentioning, don't shuffle this deck at all because the app is gonna specifically pull you towards certain cards by title. You won't need to randomly grab anything around the consumables. It's also worth mentioning a similar rationale applies to the minor and major injuries that your characters can potentially get. We'll touch more on this later on when we go through win and loss conditions, but essentially, as your character goes through the game and loses health and potentially gets wounded, you're gonna be taking minor injuries and major injuries. Well, you're not gonna really want to, but you're going to have to. These again will be called for by name or by title. You don't have to shuffle them up, but again, just make sure that these cards are facing up with their minor side rather than their major 
major one to start off. Final things you'll probably want within easy reach are the map tiles. However, you may not need them inside of your gameplay area. You could put them off to the side if you wish. I'll be taking these out of shot in a second. You'll also want the overlays, which are at the very top there within easy reach as well, as these will both be called upon by the app as the dungeon presents itself. Now join me as we head inside the app and set ourselves up for a campaign. Here we have a look at the inside of the app. You're gonna notice a gear or options menu in the bottom left-hand corner. If we click on that, it gives us an options button and a glossary button. If you click on the glossary button, literally everything in regards to the app in terms of rules is laid out here by keywords. You'll see this mentioned later on, but it's really, really handy to have a quick reference to everything. And you'll notice as we go through the gameplay, there will be highlighted keywords in the text as the app is reading it out to you. And you can just hold your finger finger on a keyword in order to pop up the rules specific to that keyword, making things really easy to reference without any need to dive into the learn to play booklet. So that's a nice addition. Also inside this gear, if you go to the options menu, you'll see here we have a language change ability. We have camera controls, volume controls for music, sound effects, and hero voices, plus a hobby next promos enable button or checkbox here that you can enable if you have those promos. If you don't, you just leave it blank. Now at this point, we need to make a decision. Are we going for a new campaign or a load of a previously played campaign? Well, in my case, we're going with a new one. Now I need to decide what my party's name is going to be. I'm gonna call us the Shadows, just because we lurk in the shadows. We'll go with that. And we're gonna embark and move straight into the quest difficulty where we have to choose between Journey, Standard, Heroic and Warfare. We can choose any of these four and we also can change the difficulty level at any point during the campaign as well, which is really handy because you can up things if you find them to be not difficult enough or dial things back a bit. The Uthuk Ilan, Waikar the Undying and his army of the undead. The Dragon Lords. Three times has Terranov been brought to the brink of ruin, and three times have great heroes risen to save it. But those heroes are gone, and the evil has returned. The first of Terranov's twelve baronies has fallen to the Ethuk Ilan. The Council dispatched a great army to meet the threat. Sending the Athuk scattering. But what was a single enemy became 10,000. As impossible to fight as smoke, but still as deadly as fire. Once again, darkness gathers. Athuk stalked the wilds. The undead muster in the And another old enemy gathers its strength. As the Baronies fought. A small caravan has made camp along the road through the hanging woods. One group of travelers sits apart from the rest. Four figures stare into the flames of their campfire, each with their own thoughts. The fire crackles, the only sound in the summer night. We've nearly made it, Indris. Tomorrow we'll be in Frostgate, and then we can send our letter to the Baroness. Does the bird ever talk back? She's a fire spirit. She doesn't talk exactly. It's more of an emphatic connection. Why write to the Baroness? Since the uh, accident that bonded me to Indris, well, we have to more or less wander and look for opportunities to learn more magic. I'm hoping that Baroness will let me study her Illyrons, those majestic birds Forthen is so famous for. I think they might be magical too. 
What about the rest of you? What comes next once we reach Frostgate? It doesn't matter. It has to matter. Silence reigns for a moment. Or I could just guess? How about we play a guessing game? All right, Bryn, it's Bryn, right? Let's see, I think. The group chooses at this point. So, is Bryn a hardened mercenary or was she a runaway princess fleeing an arranged marriage? We have a choice here and as a group we get to decide, but when you're playing solo, well, that choice is me. So, I'm gonna go ahead and choose that she was a hardened mercenary. So we'll click on that. You are a hardened mercenary. You took only the jobs that aligned with your own moral code until you were betrayed. Now you're seeking vengeance hot on the heels of your former captain. Vengeance isn't the marshal's way. We were trained to seek justice, which is a very different thing. But there aren't very many marshals anymore. The Uthuk attacked and nearly wiped us out before I'd completed my training. The Uthuk are a scourge on us all. I'm so sorry, Bryn, if you ever want to talk. Gladden, you're next, I think. The group now chooses whether Gladden is a writing a travel log or if you are hunting the White Heart. So this is a choice around this particular party member. I'm gonna probably choose that they're hunting the White Heart. Let's go with that. You are hunting the White Heart and you've promised your family you won't return until you found it and asked it for a mystical boon. The White Heart, what sort of nonsense is this? Well, what then? Did you lose someone in the Uthuk too? Is that how you lost your hearing? I lost my hearing in early adulthood as a very common in my blood as is very common in my bloodline and I don't care to answer any more questions. Reading everyone's lips by firelight is draining enough without dwelling on my past. Pester Virix, if you want to learn more about our past, it's their turn next. Leave me out of this. Oh, much too late, Varix. I think the group now chooses that Varix is searching for something or traveling to something. I'm going to say that uh, Varix is traveling to something. Enough. My history is easy to guess. I did not tear my own wings to shreds. My, the hybrid drags one talon across the tattered mass of scars along one arm. All that remains of their wings. As for who tore them and why, that information is private. I will not share it with chance met traveling companions who happen to be escorting the same caravan. The Dragon Lord who attacked Kel, did you have anything to do with? The time when all my kin served the Dragon Lords is long past. Some still do, but others have found a different path, a better path. I served no dragon. Let's focus on the caravan. I saw lights through the trees not that far away. A guard tower? One of those Baronese watchtowers guarding the road north, yes. With them so close by, we should have an uneventful night. The caravan settles down for the night. Merchants and hostlers spreading out into the surrounding woods for privacy and comfort. Surely with the watchtower close by, they will be safe. Now at this point, we get to select the heroes for our quest, and it does say it requires two to four heroes. So again, if you're playing solo, you need to pick two at the lowest amount, but you can control more. We already know the characters we've selected earlier on in this video, so Varix and Cyrus are going to be our selections. So let's go ahead and highlight them and confirm. Even if we are near a watchtower, we should set a watch, Cyrus says. Any volunteers? At this point, as a group, we get to choose which hero will be on the watch. Huh, well, in that case, I think I'm going to actually go ahead and have uh, Varix actually be on the watch. I think the Weathered Outcast is a good choice. I'll take the first watch to get it over with, says Varix, with an irritated click of their claws. Varix is on a watch. At first, the night passes uneventfully, with Varix watching over the others as they sleep. But of course, no great tale begins on a quiet night. Varix spots movement in the shadows not far from the caravan. In the dark, shapes too sinister to be animals pass between the trees and linger behind bushes. Something is not right. 
At this point, it is now saying, welcome, you have just begun your first quest in the campaign. This quest will teach you how to use the app. When a new rule is introduced, this tutorial will let you know where to learn more. This is more so around what I talked about before, where you can hold your finger down on highlighted keywords to get more information. So an example, I could hold my finger on underlays and will load and immediately take me to that spot in the glossary. This is something I really, really like. Makes things really quick and snappy and it's just a quick click back on the screen and you're right back into the action again. This is going to be really helpful for referencing key terminology within the game. The movement in the dark draws Varix toward a nearby lake. At this point, we're placing tile 10B and one water underlay underneath, as you can see by the denoted lines that are dashed. So we have 10B we need to place, water underneath of it, and then we'll continue on. So as you can see on the game table, we have 10B placed as well as the water underlay underneath. Heading back inside the app, we can now continue on. It states that each underlay has a different mechanical effect, and for quick reference, again, we can just quickly tap on the underlay and it will let us know. So, for instance, with water, there's a movement mechanic that we can click on that water to find out what that is. The app also introduces in-app rules reference. Again, this ties back to what you saw earlier with the glossary, so you can check game rules at any point in time. Next, it states, to the west of the lake, dark shapes twitch and flitter among the creakly swaying branches. At this point, we're placing one sight token. We'll go ahead and hit continue to see what else comes. To the east of the lake, the pathway continues, the darkness, a friend to bandits and mercenaries. You cannot shake the feeling of being watched. Place a sight token as depicted. We'll go ahead and hit continue. It says this is a sight token, and when a hero moves adjacent to a sight token, which means adjacency in this game is anywhere around, even diagonally, orthogonally, around one of these sight tokens, and you immediately resolve its effect by dragging the hero's portrait in the bottom portion of the app towards the token and then again of course you can click on these in order to learn more about site tokens if you want so we'll go ahead as an example here jump right in you can find all the information around how the game effects shift around site tokens all right we'll go ahead and hit continue it states in the darkness and lost in thought you stray a little further from the camp than intended on your watch we're now going to go ahead and place a character here on the highlighted space and it's depicting that character with its name the rest of the party will be placed later so on the game board here is how things currently look we have varix in place we also have the site tokens in place let's head back to the app and continue I'll go ahead and hit continue inside the app as we've completed all these initial steps and it states here the objective has been updated. We are now focusing on investigating the darkness around the lake. So these site tokens are obviously what we're going after here. So let's go ahead and hit continue and we move now into what's called the hero phase. The app is also saving things and at this point we now can begin our very first turn. At this stage in the game we have everything set up and ready to go for our very first hero turn or phase. We'll be diving into this in full detail in the next video. The one thing I want to mention is around the win and loss conditions for this game. Each quest is going to have its own objectives that are displayed at the top of the screen. We saw the objective currently is to investigate the darkness around the lake. So as of right now, that's all we know. The app will open things up as we continue to explore within the world. Now, if the heroes complete the final objective of a quest, the heroes win and the quest ends. If the final objective can't be completed or if any hero has a major injury and they are then wounded again after their major injury, the heroes lose and the quest ends. Now, wounded heroes and injuries are described in much greater detail within the Learn to Play booklet, but don't worry, you'll be seeing a lot of that in action as we move through the upcoming playthrough. Now, when a quest ends, the heroes would then progress to the next quest, but the outcome of the quest and whether the heroes won or lost could affect the future quests and other aspects of the campaign down the line. With that said, that is going to conclude this overview and setup video for Descent Legends of the Dark. Really hope this is helpful and informative for you to get an understanding of what you need to do to get this game to the table. Also, how the app begins to integrate with the board game itself. And you'll be seeing a lot more of that when we head into the playthrough in the very near future. Thanks again for watching. And as always, keep on rolling solo. Thank <laughs> you.